Hey guys, so what we're going to do today is 10 basic watercolor techniques um, just to get you more familiar with that material. And the first thing you're going to do is um, gather all the supplies that are together on the page. So we have brushes, make sure you have a hard bristle brush, some watercolor brushes, and those watercolor brushes are the ones that have the clear handle. Make sure you have your watercolor paints. Um, that they're all been uh, a little bit wet. You just have a couple oil pastels, you just have a paper towel, a cup of clean water they can get from the sink, um, a little cup of salt. And then once you have all that, you want to make sure you get 10 squares drawn into your sketch, into your watercolor paper. Um, and you can label them to kind of help you keep organized. And that's what we're going to do first. So the first technique is called a flat wash, and it's just what it sounds like. It's when you're trying to get an even, flat color that's evenly distributed amongst your little pitcher plane. So to do that, what you want to do is make sure you have a lot of water on your brush. If you don't have enough water, the pigment's going to get soaked up by the page and kind of stick to the page, and then you won't really be able to get rid of those original lines and edges. So make sure you're dipping your brush into clean water, and then, like you can see here, there's a lot of water on that brush. And then just kind of push that pigment around until you feel like it's evenly distributed. It doesn't have to be dark, it can be light. Um, it can be either one, as long as it's kind of even and flat. All right, the next one's called a graded wash, which is very similar. It just means, though, that you're going to go from a dark to a light. Um, you can also go from one color to another, but anytime you have a change, um, usually dark to light, that would be a graded wash. And to do that, start making, take clean water. I use mine, mine's a little bit dirty, just so you can kind of see the water outline. But you want to fill that whole square with water, and once that's filled with water, then what you're going to do is go ahead and add pigment at the top um, or you know at the bottom whatever pick a side and then you want to make sure you have a lot of pigment but you still want to have a lot of water on your brush see here it goes at the top pretty pretty dense lots of pigment and then you're going to just kind of pull it down and keep adding water and pulling it down until it thins out and becomes even Okay, next up is a technique called lifting. So to lift watercolor off the page, um, if you want to really go back to the white, again, start with filling that square or the pitcher plane with clean water. Cover the whole space, because it's easier to pick watercolor paint up off of a wet surface than a dry one. Once it gets dry, it kind of gets soaking up. This is also a really easy way to make clouds. So just kind of drop in your colors, push them around, keep it, again, very wet, very saturated with water and color. And once the whole thing's kind of filled, you can either take um, a dry brush or a paper towel and just kind of blot it and pull up color. And if it's wet enough when you start, you can kind of go back to white. Uh, you can kind of control how, how much you pull away. Okay, the next one is wet on wet, and it's really good for watercolor because it's a nice way to kind of feature how the water can lose control, how you can kind of let the paint move around a surface. So just to do this one, all you're going to do is make sure, again, you have a lot of water on the brush. You're going to start adding one color, and then you'll have an adjacent, another color you add, and then you're just going to let them intersect and interact. And you can keep adding water to those points of intersection, or you can kind of let them be hard edges. Um, it's not a whole lot of control with this technique, but it is a really great watercolor feature. Okay, the dry brush is great, but it has to actually be a dry brush. If you've been using the same brush, I would switch it up at this point. Um, you have a few options to pick from, the ones in your case and the ones that I left out for you. Uh, you also, you might notice that I'm really taking the color from the edge of that circle. And the reason I'm doing that is because that's where there's less water. So the more pigment you have, the higher pigment versus water you have in your brush, uh, the more of a feathering kind of effect you can get, the more you can kind of drag and scumble it across the page. Um, and that can work out really well for different kinds of effects. And then this is one worth trying with different size brushes and different shapes because you have flat, you have round, you have the hard bristle brushes, and they're all going to have a different kind of look when they're dry. So it's worth trying to do it with a few different tools. Okay, for the next one, you want to kind of cover up the areas around your square because it's going to be splatter, it's pretty messy. Um, if there's not enough of these papers to have your own, just like wait someone else has done, you can share. But this one, you're just going to take, um, again, it kind of works better with a dry brush, but take a dry brush, 
get pigment on there and you can kind of test out more pigment versus like, you know, wetted down pigment, more water. We're just going to do, we're just going to flick it around and it has a really nice uh, look to it. Okay, this next one's called Color Drop, which is where you want to kind of take clean water, and it really should be clean, and then you might have to rearrange how you stand in relation to your paper, but you want to draw out some shapes on the paper with clean water. You can kind of see on the example I did previously, it kind of has like a flower petal feel to it. Just go ahead and draw some very close together shapes. You can try the petal shape, which is, you know, kind of a pointed um, teardrop. And then once you have all your water on the page, you're going to load up a tiny little tip of color. Um, and you want to go for like a lot of pigment, not like a watered down version. You kind of dip your brush into the paint uh, and not into the water and then put it right onto your page. And it'll kind of bleed quickly. And depending on how much water you use, depending on if you angle your paper, it can bleed faster or slower. And what you can do is you can keep adding pigment and let it kind of float, like slowly be pulled out by the water or you can kind of push it along um, and really kind of like pull it to the edge of the petal. And then you can also use the lifting technique again if you feel like you pulled it too far and it's now all one flat color. You can go with, in with a dry brush and then pull up more color at the tip if you want to. All right, the oil resist, um, you can do resist with a lot of different stuff. You can use like a fancy masking fluid, which is where um, you can put down the special kind of paint onto the paper directly, and you can kind of like paint over it and then pull it off. Or you can also do things like any kind of oil-based mark making tool. You can take an oil pastel, you have a black and white option, draw on your little page, and then you can do watercolor around it. You can also you can do tape, you can put tape directly on your page. But anytime you do, you, you block off the paper with the material, it's called a resist. This is an oil resist. And then once you have your marks made out through that square, you want to take your paint, but also a lot of water. You can kind of see that the brush is going to go into the color, and that's going to go into the cup to get really loaded up on water a few times, and then it's going to go onto that page. If you have more pigment than water, it's not going to have the same kind of impact. All right, glazing is a term. You can see this one is a little different. Like there's the example is right above this one. But glazing is a term for when you do thin layers of paint of any kind. It could do with acrylic, watercolor, or oil paint. And for watercolor, what you have to do is put on your first layer and then you have to let it dry. So for this one, you can kind of see you just make like a flat wash um, or you can make just, you know, a multi-color or like multi-value wash, either one, but a thin wash nonetheless like that's the big thing you want to do you can see here is like not really a flat color but fill up your square with a flat color and then let it dry completely to the touch that that could take several minutes um, but what you can do in the meantime just to practice is you can go back to your flat wash which should be dry by now and just kind of go over it you can kind of see the one I have above that's been dry for a little while I can put another layer over it it won't make the color below it bleed through if I move fast enough if you go really slow and kind of let a puddle sit there it'll activate the water below it because watercolor never really dries. Um, but if you go fast over a dry surface, you can kind of build up a nice rich layer with glazing. And the last one is adding salt. And just like the splatter, this is kind of a little bit chaotic. You can't really control what's going to happen. But you want to load up a lot of water onto an area. A lot of pigment and a lot of water can work really well for this. So you're going to keep adding water to your brush, adding water to the surface. And then once it's loaded up with again like kind of gloppy water just sprinkle a little bit of salt on it the one i have in the example if you look close you can kind of see how it soaks up the watercolor in unpredictable patterns which is like a really nice abstract texture you can add um, and then once it's dry you would hold it over a trash can and kind of flick it off to clean it off and that's it for the 10 kind of techniques i want you to try out um, if the it might take you a lot longer than like the, te the 10 minute video has a lot of sped up areas. So this might take you at least 40 minutes, about half the class. So once it's done, I want you to go into one of those turtles that I linked to and try out some of these techniques with one of those turtles, whichever one you find the most interesting.